Welcome back, Bleacher Bums. I would prefer Justin Fields any day over to Kirk Cousins. The White Sox will relook at Nashville within the next five years. What are the three best teams in the NHL right now? Greg Popovich is washed. In the moment, I find myself rooting for Scotty, but it's never fun. All right, shot takes. That's a <laughs> violation. That's, that <laughs> is a violation. That is a violation of HIPAA laws. Yeah. Welcome to and Bleacher Bums Podcast. And welcome back, Bleacher Bums. Um, we have a couple of things to get through today, a shorter episode than our normal one, probably normal podcast episode length, to be honest, but short for, for Bleacher Bums, we've been gone for a week, but uh, we've got Hard Knocks to recap, we still have Divisions to preview, we're going to see how many we can get through today, but starting with the AFC East, um, and we got Shit Takes at the end, of course, so boys, how do we want to start this Great Hard Knocks recap. I mean, technically, we have two episodes to recap here. Really yeah, quick. I don't, I can't remember much about the second Here's episode because it was kind of loud. Second nothing, episode was bad. Second nothing episode, yeah. happened in the second episode. The third episode is the best episode thus far. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I think. Um, let's we'll start with let's we'll start in chronological order. What was the first thing that really stood out yesterday? I think it was. Um, well, early on in the episode, they talked about the Judon trade, which which happened. A few days ago, um, and it broke last week. I think on Thursday that mm-hmm. you know the Falcons got Judon uh, from the Patriots for a third rounder, and then it came out like a little bit after via like I don't know if it was some NFL reporters that were legit or some aggregators on uh, Twitter that like basically the Bears and Falcons both offered a third round pick, uh, and it came down to Judon picking which scenario he wanted to go to. Um, I'm glad that this episode kind of cleared that up because it was pretty much clear that you know judon didn't want to sign an extension with the bears that they had offered as part of like the deal the bears were not going to make this trade without a extension which they kind of learned their lesson from the montez sweat thing where it's like you want to have something done before you make the trade so judon himself came out and said like he didn't want to sign an extension with the bears or falcons he wants to kind of like play it play the season out and earn his next contract so that's probably why he chose the falcons because the, the Falcons were not mandating that they, you know, uh, extend him to make that deal. So I thought that was really fascinating. I mean, I think Hard Knocks has done a really good job, you know, going back to the Giants one with the offseason, of really covering the the GM side mm-hmm. of things um, and giving people, like, a peek behind the curtain. And, and, and kudos to, I mean, it's probably Ryan Poles' idea to, like, hey, we should put that out there in the episode that, like, hey, he didn't choose the Falcons just because he thought they were a better team, like, he chose them because he didn't make them sign an extension. So I thought that was really interesting. Which also gets to the point of, and I'm glad we haven't done this division yet, what the hell are the Falcons doing? Why would they <laughs> give up a third-round pick Our guy. for a guy who's basically a rental for Our a guy. season? Our guy got promoted. Ryan Pace, oh. he got a promotion. He's now the, he? vice, the vice president of football operations and uh, player personnel, good for him. Yeah, good for him. Honestly, shout out to him, man. His first move in that position, Matthew Judon, no extension. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Falcons fans. That's what you get with Ryan. Pace. I mean, I'm I I'm excited to get into that division because I don't know what the hell's going on there. <laughs> oh, I don't um, either. Yeah, genuinely, like that's that's a team I'm perplexed by constantly. Um, but yeah, I think the other things to kind of take away from this particular episode i'm trying to remember the beginning of the episode how they kicked it off oh the pardon my take interview which was great mm-hmm. by yeah the shout way. out to those guys pardon mm-hmm. my take guys making it on to um hard knocks which was awesome teasing the caleb interview on hard knocks which is brilliant brilliant marketing i went to listen to it the first thing this morning like five in the morning i'm like where's the caleb interview I well i guess those those guys were saying the a lot of the hard knocks um uh, producers and people at film are like big fans of the show, mm-hmm. so they basically mm-hmm. asked Big Cat and PFT if they want if they could like, you know, kind of use that footage as part of the episode. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, sure, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, one hundred percent. You want to put us on Hard Knocks? Okay, <laughs> yeah. So Twist my arm, yeah. Um, that was pretty notable. Um, you know, going out of order a little bit. Um. You know, they kind of squashed the whole rumor that, like, Keenan Allen wasn't looking good in practice with that brief segment that he was just kind of killing it. Yeah. Um, 
so that was kind of I, I like the fact that they're squashing a lot of like the the typical training camp rumors like mm-hmm. oh this guy's not really having a good camp it's like no he's he's having a great camp um what else was there they had to, the kevin warren segment was so goofy. dumb it just didn't need just, it that was so didn't dumb. Need it. Well, so, so uncomfortable so when, dude like yeah so I'm I'm watching this with my wife who's not a football person, but she will she she's gonna watch it because she wants to watch the Bears this season with me and she wants to like get invested in the people. And this is that kind of venture for most um I don't want to generalize here, but for non non football people, this is kind of their investment into it. It's like, okay, the reality segment of it, if I know the people, I'm more likely to watch the team and like be invested in that. And uh, she even said to me, she was like, oh, did they officially pick a stadium because they're, like, designing it? And I'm like, no. No. <laughs> they did not. But they're talking about how they want the suites to look and if they should have assigned seating or bar <laughs> movable uh, like, seats. Who cares? High top, why, yeah, high was top that in, why was that in the episode you, at I mean, all? Kevin Bourne had to put that in there. He is very delusional, clearly, with the whole project. I, I don't understand... We talked I, I about think a lot. He thinks, the, he thinks Hard Knocks is like a opportunity to like rebrand Kevin Warren for some reason. Yeah, I don't understand it. Um, also, like, does he have to be in the room with Ryan Poles going over like player transactions? The no, that, that part thing, like, looks almost... weird to me too. Where it's like, is Poles asking him for permission to do this? That's. I, it, I mean, I it, guess it, like, that. If that is, that's fair, a problem. To be to be fair, that it could have been protocol for. Like he could have been saying, "Hey, here's what the extension looks like from a money standpoint." That could be what it was for, but they didn't present it like that. It just was like he was talking it, about the injuries. He's like, "No, yeah, bi- you know, the bicep." That's which I, I was, think is cool. That that's that's, where, that's how they go into. That's it. where I was confused. I was like, "Well, if, if anything, he should be talking to Kevin Warren about the financials of the, the extension that they'd be offering to Judon." Mm-hmm as part of the deal, not like the injury history of the, or the, the wins value that he brings to the team. Like it was just what Kevin Warren doesn't know that shit. You know, he's, he's, he's a money guy. Like I think he has to sign off on the money side of things that Ryan pulls does, which is pretty, that's pretty standard. Like Kevin Warren's just filling that responsibility for George McCaskey. Like in previous years, you know, George McCaskey would be the one that would have to sign off on trades and, and extensions and, and deals in general. So that that checks out, but it's just the way they presented it didn't make any sense. So um, what else, though? I, I really think that... Um, Ferret King. Ferret King. Ferret King. <laughs> yeah, so so they're, they're, they're obviously <laughs> keying dumb. in on... Uh, <laughs> next episode, we'll, I think, start to see it, right? Because I think when do cuts happen next? It's, it's the next day. episode. So the cuts, cuts happen yeah. the day the next episode airs, right? And so I'm interested yeah. to see how much of that they get into the episode. I don't imagine they'll get a ton of it. But they're highlighting a handful of guys in this series that are potential cut guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we saw it in the first episode. I can't even remember the, the running back's name. Wilkins? Isaiah Wilkins? I, I, Ian, Wheeler. Ian Wheeler. Wheeler? Okay, Ian, Ian Wheeler. Ian Wheeler. Yeah. Um, he is, he's definitely going to get cut. Um, Theo Benedet, oh, Theo, yeah. the Canadian guy, the um, Austin, Austin Reed. Reed, the guy who's fighting for the third string job with yeah. Jeff Driscoll, uh, who they haven't talked about at all. No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's Brett Rippon and and Brett. Oh, uh, Brett Rippon. Austin. Sorry. Yes, yeah. Jeff Driscoll is backing somewhere up. else. He's somewhere else. Jaden Daniels, I think. I don't know. He, no, he may be. He may be third string behind Marcus Mariota. I don't know. Um, oh, but it, I, I, I want to say he's in Washington. Yeah, yeah. third string so behind. Because he, he definitely played this Mariota. weekend, too. Um, yeah. Okay, so Brett Rip, <laughs> Brett Rippon and... Uh, Brett Rippon will be the and, third string quarterback and for this Austin team. Reed. Yeah, Brett Rippon, I, I mean... Because he knows Shane Waldron's offense. That's the thing. It's like, you got Caleb, you got Bajent, who is a solid backup, who's won games with... Luke Getze is the fucking offense coordinator, which, by the way, Raiders fans on Twitter cracking me up already that they're already like anti Luke yeah. Getze. They're like, what are we doing? It's like, um, but that's a different story for, hey, for day. By the way, for um, people who are in fantasy leagues with, make sure you draft Devontae Adams. Uh, he's going to do really well in that offense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just wait till we talk about that one. Brett Rippon <laughs> will be the third string quarterback for this team just because he has yeah. experience with Waldron's offense. Well, like, and here's the thing, too. I wonder if they'll touch on this in Hard Knocks because I, I am interested to, to learn more about it. But 
he's probably Austin Reed's probably going to be the practice squad guy for the Bears unless he gets a contract from somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and being a practice squad quarterback in the NFL, not a bad gig. No, not at all. Not a bad uh, gig at all. He was like signing bonus five k. I'm like shit. That's that's. Brutal. But I, I'm like, pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure minimum salary for these practice squad guys is like five grand a week or something like that i want to say the nfl vet minimum or something nfl minimum for practice squad guys is like total salary was like 200k i, don't, I can't remember what it mm-hmm. was um yeah it's, it's, it's five grand a week that you're on and if team. you're on the 53 man roster i think the minimum is like 800k yeah, it's th- it's not so it's not a bad gig if, if no. austin reed gets the back so uh, the, the practice squad to... job uh, the NFL as of 2024, the minimum salary for an NFL practice squad player is 12,000 per week. 12,000. So week. how many for players with two or more accrued seasons, the minimum is 16,100 per but week. But I'm also pretty sure they only get paid during the season. Yeah, how many seasons yeah, yeah, yeah. or how many yeah. weeks are in the season typically? We got how many 6 5 months? Is that counting Let's preseason? Let's just say 20. Let's just say 20 weeks. Uh 20 weeks. Yeah, it's about 240. It- it says it's like uh, it translates good. to yeah. like it could be anywhere between two hundred sixteen thousand or two hundred and like ninety thousand for mean, an eighteen week regular season. You're in That's the one percent. That's more than I make in a year. You're, you're in the one. You're in the one. More than most is yeah, more than yeah. almost everybody makes. Like that's, yeah, to that's say a like lot. if you're making two hundred. That 200- seems like the like the goal. Just like be a practice squad player for a season. hundred percent. Yeah, and if you're and if you're employed by the NFL for five years, you get life insurance or health and life insurance for life. And you get pension, I think, too. Yep. Like yep. Yeah. Um, not a yes. bad gig. So not a bad, not a bad gig. No, good, good for him if he ends up being the practice squad guy. Um, a lot of because, crocodile uh, or a lot of uh, Tory Taylor in this episode. We did get some Tory. I think that was good. I thought I it was thought finally it was good great. that we were getting different players. Yes. Yeah. I love the fact that someone was like, some boomer reporter was like, "Oh, should we call you the crocodile punter?" He's like, "Yeah, don't, I, don't." Do I that. loved his reaction. <laughs> like, so like, he's that like, was please. His- I just think that was a, a great way to establish a relationship with the Chicago media is for mm-hmm. him to be like, do not call me that. Like, are you, I mean, <laughs> are you kidding me? I do not want to be known as the Australian guy. He yeah. knows his place. He's like, look, man, if, if you guys know me, then that's a problem. Like, he's like, if, if, yeah. if I'm getting attention for some reason, that's a problem. I, I disagree with that take of his because I think he is going to get a lot of attention because I mm-hmm. think there are going to be some scenarios where he does flip the field. Um, and I... I I've never seen a punter get this much hype before, but I guess like the guy is a magician at like pinning the ball inside the like five yard line. The ten, it, ten to five, the ten, yeah. to ten to the you know the end zone basically, um, and getting it out of bounds like within the ten to the um, the goal line. I mean well, that is you, valuable. I mean, didn't you I don't, hear that there people are calling him the Scotty Scheffler of punters? That's what they called him in. The, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what Ryan Pace called, or yeah. Ryan Poles called. Him. Ryan, Ryan Poles, Poles called I, him. There is value to it. I, it, the guy was taken the fourth round for a reason. So if he is that good at it, I mean, you saw, you heard Shane Waldron in the the one mm-hmm. clip was just like, if you guys see what this guy's doing out there, like, it's it's wild, and it's like, yeah. that's a guy who's been in the NFL like coaching for, you know, ten plus years. So mm-hmm. for him to say that shit, it's like, okay, he he is clearly a a different breed of punter um, yeah as someone who has watched a uh, a lot of iowa football over the last couple of years he uh he's gotten a lot of reps uh, he, he's a good punter <laughs> but but here's the thing flipping the field you know doesn't necessarily uh make you a better football team it, it puts you in better positions it helps but, it helps yeah yes. but it doesn't win football games necessarily i do think hey, i mean maybe maybe in 20 years we'll be having the uh the uh taylor conversation for hall of fame maybe we'll uh <laughs> Uh, I mean, Bears, Bears special teamers seem to just get their way in. I mean, I do think that that was a minor upgrade they had to make in the offseason because their previous punter was not that good. Um, that that was, was another thing rounder. I was... fifth rounder. The previous punter? I think it was like a fifth or sixth no, rounder. No, I don't think the, he was. So that's what I was thinking, though, is I was like, imagine watching this as the Bears' previous punter, and everybody's just like... Yeah, he's just such an upgrade, like so much better than the. <laughs> oh no, he I mean, was but, like seventh round. But I will say, like the the punt he had early on in the preseason game, where he was kicking out of the end zone, he, he kicked that shit to like the thirty five on the other side. I was like, that is so that is valuable, you know. I looked at one of the punts that they highlighted, and he like from the point it re- left his foot, it was at the thirty five yard line. It went basically to the five, and it, I was like, okay, that's. That's pretty crazy. Well, another thing they were talking that. about is also his hang time. 
how he just keeps the ball up in the air for an extended period of well, time it, to help. Yeah, and he has like eight different punts that he can do. Like he can do one with insane hang time. He can do one that like bounces out of bounds instead mm-hmm. of for, <laughs> forward. For punter enthusiasts, I know I have at least one person listening to this podcast who knows what I'm talking about when I say this. What name. a punt. Um, <laughs> but Shane Leckler is the only punter I can think of that had like this much kind of hype around him. And I remember playing Madden like 10 years ago and Shane Leckler was like rated in the nineties as a punter. Cause, and, and, and he, I think he still plays in the league, but it is at his peak, like he was one of those guys that can like punt a ball like 70 yards. It was like, like with ease. And there was actually a bears game that they were playing. I think he was in the Raiders for a while. Um, the Raiders had like a sick you know, special teams. They had Janikowski and Shane Leckler because they just, that's what the Raiders did back then. They just drafted freaks for their special teams. But I, I remember there was a punt where it was like, you know, the Bears were receiving the ball and Leckler absolutely just pinned them back in like a brutal position. So there is value to it, is my point. There, People don't, you know, give punters enough credit because most of them are not that good. They don't really add much value. But I mean, if this guy flips the field constantly hopefully they're not punting that much per per what caleb williams said right Mm -hmm. but when you have to i think there is some value to it so he got some airtime that was kind of cool um but here's the other thing too is like even breaking down that game i think we objectively all can be very excited about caleb after that preseason game but he still did go three and out three times in a row against backups Um, yeah um and and so like i think that's these are the things as bears fans that i think we have to like get ourselves ready for with a rookie quarterback in the nfl is you will have those dry like those series where they're just not going to go right because he's not used to the communication or the tempo or the feel of the game but also remember his communication system was not 100 percent working in those first couple drives. I'm also, saying, I know. Also, I, I, I get also, I'm not using it as also, an excuse. I get it. So he's also, piecing it together. Also, but these I, are the things, like a, a veteran quarterback would know the play calls. He also, would know, he would know what to do. Also, people were saying like, oh, he's playing a bunch of bad defensive backups. Well, I mean, his starters weren't all out there either. Like he was not, Keenan Allen and DJ Moore were not out there after the first series, I don't think. so. But, but the other thing too, yeah, the backups argument I don't love because it's like, okay, doesn't matter who's on the field when he's sprinting to his left and throwing it off balance perfectly into uh, Romo Dunze's arms. Like the t- backups oh, I know. don't the, matter. The, those backups situation. are no, I know, those backups are still like better players. Like those guys, a lot of those backups end up being playing time during the season because of injuries. So like they're mm-hmm. still solid players. Um, they're still better than any college defense out there. But I wasn't freaked out about the three and outs because he didn't have his full offense out there. Like no, but but I am I, I am saying like you you will see the punter a decent amount. You're not going to see this Bears offense humming. No, 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 no. in his rookie I, season. Not not at least in the first half of the season. I do think that he'll be one of those guys that you know starts games out potentially a little slow with some some rust or mm-hmm. some you know some shakiness. But I do think that as the game goes on, he'll get better. Um, I, I also think you're just going to see some ridiculous things every single game. From Caleb. Yeah, like you, I think what you're gonna see, which I'm okay with this year. Again, I, I think the expectation for me is like win nine to ten games and try to get a wild card spot. Um, you know, it, I don't want it to become last year, last season's expectations where it's like, hey, as, as long as the quarterback looks good, I'm okay. Like at this point, you've built the defense for kind of almost win now mode, I'd say. Um, but I think with Caleb, I'm okay with him just making some insane throws and and throwing interceptions i'm okay as long as and you it's not should like, we should expect that as yeah i'm okay with that. i mean i don't want 30 and 30 like Jameis, but i i do think that like the guy's gonna take risks he's gonna take some chances and that's okay like Pey- paid manning through 30 interceptions we'll hear this which, a lot everyone everyone uses that example right but I, I don't think he'll throw that many but i think that there will be times that he throws picks and it's just that's just part of the process like yes um if you want the guy to become you know the next Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. I mean, Aaron Rodgers threw a lot of interceptions early in his career too. Like people don't remember that. that Again, I I agree. And that's the thing is it's like, you want this guy to learn and like develop in a way that he's our quarterback for the next decade rather than, Oh, if we don't get a wild card this year, it's a bust like that. So I think that's where bears fans, I, I think most bears fans are there, 
But I think as the season goes on, it's going to be tempting to go, oh, if we don't get this wild card spot, like it's, a, you know, it's I, a failure of a season. What I really like about this Bears team is I know the offense is going to really rely upon DeAndre Swift, and he has not been talked about a lot in hard knocks yet. Um, I like the running back group a lot. Um, it's it's pretty diverse between Swift, Roshan Johnson, and Khalil Herbert. They're all different types of runners. Um, and you know they're going to use them all different. I do think this offense kind of relies upon DeAndre Swift being good and healthy um, in the run game to balance this offense out. But, man, like I, I do think that you know it's a shame we didn't get to see the full offense out there with you know continuity for two quarters. Uh, Cause I would have been very curious to see how those first, you know, if, if it was three, three and outs, for example, if Keenan Allen and DJ Moore are out there, I think they were out to the first series, but after that they were mm-hmm. pulled. Yeah. So um, I really think that this, uh, this offense, if everyone stays healthy, will be one of those offenses that really starts to pick up steam by like week six. And I, I don't think it'll be like within the first four weeks or anything like that. Yep. Um, so, all right. We probably should move on to talking about um, other divisions, but good, good hard knocks recap. We'll continue to watch that uh, basically until the season starts. Wait, real quick. Who who do we think is getting... So, of the guys we mentioned, the guys that are on the fence, kind of, who's getting cut? Velas, Velas Jr., Mm -hmm. Austin Reed, Theo Benedict. Yep. Um, Who else are we thinking of? Uh, Ian Wheeler? That they've showcased? Yeah, what about Ian Wheeler? That they've talked about in hard knocks. Yeah, Wheeler Wheeler will get cut? cut. Yes. Okay. Um, if they if they roster four running backs, which most teams I think do, yeah, um, it'll probably be Colin Johnson getting cut for sure. Probably. But remember yeah. though, um, the Bears get an extra roster spot because they have an international player, which I didn't know really? the rule. Yeah, I read that because Tory. I, let me double check that. But I read that because the Bears have Tory Taylor, because he's international, they get an extra spot. Oh, that's weird. Let me see. Yeah, I don't. Colin Johnson, I don't think will make the roster. Over, it's gonna be between him and Dante Pettis, I assume, right? Because you got DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, Tyler Scott, and then what? Pettis probably or Johnson. Let me check it out. Who we got here right now? So we've got depth chart right now has DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, Tyler Scott, Valus Jones, DeAndre Carter, Dante Pettis, Colin Johnson. And Simba Wester, Webster. He, that guy's been around forever. I feel like John Jackson the <laughs> third. <laughs> I feel like Velos is going to get cut, like we said. So I, I mean, we're probably rostering six okay. wide receivers. Here you so go. yeah, maybe. So, is probably yeah. Gonna get cut. Beginning in 2024, each of the 32 NFL clubs is eligible to fill a 17th roster spot on its pra- practice squad, reserved for an international player. Practice squad though, not so. Roster. If he's on the fifty-two man though, does that matter? The fifty-three that man roster, roster. Or the fifty-three. Yeah, I think that was a practice squad rule, maybe. But I don't, I don't know, know if that if that counts. That if he's on the fifty-three man roster, they take that extra spot and then add it to the practice squad. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um, oh, can't forget right. about Travis Homer. By the way, running back. Um, I think they like. They heard they said they like Travis Homer for special teams, so I guess yeah. they'll probably cut Ian Wheeler. If I had to guess. Yeah, I'm guessing Velas, uh, Wheeler, they both get cut. Um, yeah, so they haven't talked about any linemen really. But. No, the linemen have gotten no love yet in this 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 whole series. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, think about it. we haven't even like seen a Darnell Wright or we haven't even met the the O line. No, nope. through this series. Tevin yeah. Jenkins has been in the background for a couple of shots, but uh, the O line and D line. I think Montez Sweat's got no time in the first three. They episodes. mentioned him. They mentioned Montez Sweat, but like, although they talk, they, they've been talking about uh, Austin Booker a lot. I know he's, but like, why is Montez Sweat not getting coverage? He's like the the, the hey, face of the the D line. Maybe next uh, next episode is lineman. Know. Yeah, I don't know, man. All right, um, let's jump into AFC East preview. Um, this is our division preview of the week. We will see if we have time for a second division. So. This division, um, it's pretty much going to be the same thing as last year. You're going to have, th- I mean, barring an Aaron, Aaron Rodgers Rogers injury, gonna ruin his other Achilles. Well, <laughs> uh, he might. If he's healthy, <laughs> it, that does shake things up. But I, I think we can start with. Let's start in order, I guess. We'll go Buffalo Bills first. Um, I have on my list here. They they signed Curtis Samuel, who's a you know veteran wide receiver. Um, they they signed some guys in the secondary. I feel like Lyle Collins 
has fallen off big time. Like he was a really mm-hmm. good right tackle for the Cowboys for years, and then went to Cincy, didn't work out there. Um, signs of Buffalo. Mac Hollins wasn't he with um, the He's Cowboys with the Ra- as well? Uh, no, he was with the, the Raiders. Raiders, and then he was with the Falcons. I always get Mac Hollins and Nico Collins mixed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they resigned Mitch Trubisky. For what <laughs> for they what did. However, yes. they lost. They did lose their top two receivers. Stephon Diggs gets traded to the Texans. Gabe Davis uh, they, signs with the Jaguars. They lost all their receivers. I feel like people kind of forget. Yeah. About the only receiver who has caught a pass from Josh Allen on this roster is Khalil Shakir. Yeah, they're they're going to be a big question mark in this division. Also, they lost Tredavious White, who's been really injured the last mm-hmm. few years. But when he's healthy, he was a shutdown corner. Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, which were their two safeties, and Leonard Floyd. So they lost a lot of guys on defense, a lot of big-name pieces. Um, Josh Allen's going to be Josh Allen, I think, but... I don't know, man. This team doesn't scream your typical Buffalo Bills the last three, four years. I, I mm-hmm. think this is potentially like, I mean, if the, if the Jets are healthy and Aaron Rodgers is healthy, I, I mean, I don't know if the Bills are in contention for this division. Call me crazy. I know Josh Allen's Josh Allen, but the defense is what more so is a question mark to me. I, I'm with you. I don't think the Bills will be as good as they have been. I think they will be a scrappy team, right? So this is a team I think that most people are expecting to be very good again just because they have been good the past couple of years, continuity with the quarterback. Um, But, yeah, this defense sucks, dude. Like, they right now they have DeMar Hamlin in a starting safety role, uh, which is bad. The guy that you 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 want to cancel. I I I did want to cancel him. He played, like, less than 25 snaps last year. And one of them was like a season ruiner for the Bills. Uh, must we not forget in that AFC Championship game? Um, he's the guy who took the penalty on the the field goal that they. Do you guys, do you guys know the uh, the Bills' projected wins this season? Uh, they in Vegas. I'd imagine I got eight it and a half, up. maybe. Eight Vegas, they're at ten and a half. Ten and a half. Oh my God! I'm taking. So expectations are pretty high for the Bills. I am not expecting them to be no. that good based on. This division still has, in my opinion, two pretty good teams in it, other than the Bills. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of roster turnover. I don't think that um, Sean McDermott's a very good coach. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing to say. but Yeah, get ready for all the Al-Qaeda a, jokes, man. He's um, uh, NFL aggregate or NFL meme aggregator page is going to start you know, pumping out the Al Qaeda Sean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sean McDermott memes again soon. Um, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm expecting the Bills to be scrappy, but like middling. So like eight or nine wins, like I, around yeah. 500 for the Bills is what I'm yeah, really I, thinking. I I, I I wholeheartedly agree. I just don't see it this year. I Josh Allen will have to like play. He, Josh Allen will have to be the best quarterback in the NFL this season, above Mahomes and everybody else in order for this team to win this division and, Um, you know, make some noise in the playoffs. I just don't see it, though. All of their road games are tough, too, by the way. So, like, one of the things that you hear NFL coaches say is if we win most of our games at home and we go 500 on the road, that's a recipe for success. Uh, Their road games, thanks to this nifty little spreadsheet that Brett has uh, has given us, is... Dolphins, Ravens, Texans, Jets, Seahawks, Colts, Rams, Lions, and then Patriots the last week. So those are all tough games besides the Patriots. And don't forget, uh, they have back-to-back-to-back road games. Ravens, Texans, mm, Jets. All yeah. back-to-back-to-back. Oof. Yeah. In weeks tough, th- tough four, stretch. five, and six. I mean, um, those, that's a tough road schedule. And I do not see them coming close to 500 on that road schedule. So they're going to have to be pretty close to perfect at home to come away with like a winning record this year yeah um let's go into the miami dolphins next in order alphabetical order i like this team but um i'm still not really i'm not sold on Tua yet myself I, he's gonna be good i think but i this can be a really fascinating team on offense because they are just gonna i mean talk about just track speed across the board. I, I do think Devon A-Chain is going to have a breakout season. Um, 
I know some people have been kind of hinting that with fantasy football previews and like trying to trying to hide him as like hidden value um, in drafts, but this team's gonna be very fast, as we know, with Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, A Chain. Who's that guy they just drafted to? This super fast uh is a running back they drafted. Jalen, right? Isn't he super fast? Yeah. Like he's so you know, my, McDaniel's gonna be scheming up, but these, this is the type of team that's gonna start out really hot, I feel like, in September, October when it's warm out. And then as the season goes on into like, you know, winter tough football weather, they're gonna it's it's the Dolphins. Like no one associates success with the Dolphins in like, you know, gritty Midwestern weather or like East Coast weather when it comes to actual, you know, um real games, you know. So they had some interesting signings. They had Shaq Barrett. Uh they signed old. Shaq Barrett, yeah, old. But they signed Jordan Poyer as a yep. safety. So they basically stole him from uh the Bills. They really didn't have any other big names. I mean John U. Smith keeps making appearances on new teams obj um was obj signed there really? yep he's the this third is... receiver right now wow so yeah um, hill so waddle and obj wow kind of i think this team is extremely dependent on everybody being healthy yeah um which doesn't happen in football their wide receiver depth is bad like their their third wide receiver right now is obj then they have Braxton Berrios, River Craycraft, Malik Washington beyond that. So Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle goes down. One of those guys is a primary pass catcher from Tua. Um, I I don't know how they're going to use running backs this year. I, I imagine they're going to kind of go committee style. They still have Mostert. Um, Achan, who you know last year struggled to stay on the field, but when he was on the field was electric. They spent a fourth-round pick on a running back, too. So I I don't really know what the direction is or the future of the running back position is there in Miami. Um, But at surface level, like their starting roster on offense should be a top five offense. But that's very much dependent on everybody staying healthy, which we know it doesn't. Um, I think it's probably a very similar Miami team to what we've seen over the last two years. Yeah, but worse on defense, in my opinion, because they did lose two. Big, big I, I think a big step back on defense. Christian yeah. Wilkins signed with the Raiders, who's their big defensive tackle, and uh, Xavier Howard. Uh, I don't know where he signed, but he's he's not with the team. So, I think that the defense takes a slight step back. Now, did didn't Vic Fangio go down to Miami, or is he with uh, the Eagles? Wasn't I... he with Miami last year, and he went to the Eagles? Yeah, that sounds I right. I think he replaced uh, Matt Patricia. <laughs> that with sounds the, right. Yeah, Philly. Anthony Weaver is their new defensive coordinator. Okay. Uh, I mean, for, yeah, for the record, in Philly. Yeah. For the record, I, Philly. I, I love Mike McDaniel for the record, but I really, I just think they're going to be heavily offensive dependent. And mm-hmm. I think they're going to have games where they score a lot and they maybe have some random blowout games it's where, where it's like, wow, the Dolphins blew out so-and-so team. That's a really good team. And then they've just they fall off towards the end of the season because they were they were first in the AFC for a, a good long chunk time. of last season, last season. Yep. and then of course they fell apart. So, um, you know, for them to go make a Super Bowl run, they pretty much need the first seed to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Yeah, if those if they go to Kansas City, Kansas Cincinnati, City, everybody says, yep, yep, you know, they're gonna get blown out. Those in- those two places specifically are tough for mm-hmm. them. Now, if they end up playing. Houston in the playoffs, for example, you know, warmer indoors, that's a different story. But like, I don't know if you can make it through the the entire AFC playoffs without playing one cold weather, you know, game and, and surviving Arrowhead or since he's, you know, that's tough. Yes, um, I, I think it's I think this is a good team, but I'm kind of with you on if you're at the point already in preseason where you have to start like scouting where they're going to be playing in the playoffs for it to be a good run that's not a good sign so they're they're no. not a deep they're not a deep playoff team but they're a good regular season team. now if they may if they are the one seed though i do like their chances having home field to make a run but i think what you said earlier is very true it's just like it's very dependent on the injury factor and home field factor so because uh, i will say like they, they're used to playing in that weather down in miami a lot of teams hate playing down there when it's like super hot because they just don't they're not used to it so they have that at their advantage early in the season but not late 
Um, Patriots. This is uh, going to be a short one. I I don't have much to say about this team. I I'm just going to say it right now. This this is my shot take, and I don't really have a, a oh, shot. Is, is it what I'm I think it to, is? I'm I'm making water take. Hear me out. <laughs> this is your worst team in the NFL this year, Correct. by a mile. I, I they're Correct. they're really like really bad. And I have they named Drake made the starter yet? I don't think mm, so. I don't think so. No. Yeah. So again, hear me out. The New England Patriots will be the worst team in the NFL in 2024. Um, I don't know if they they're gonna name Drake made the. I would assume he will be QB one. They don't have anybody on that offense that nope. is like, wow, that's that's a name. Like, if as Ramon, of if, now the starter is Jacoby Brissett. If Ramondre Stevenson is your biggest name on offense, you've got problems, big yeah. problems. Um, they they signed Antonio Gibson. They signed KJ oh, so Osborne. Replace Ezekiel Elliott though. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. That. They signed KJ Osborne to replace probably what Juju Smith Schuster. <sighs> yeah, Austin Hooper, who's still playing football. Um, and that's about it on offense. They, I mean, they're they're a bad team. Also, Gerard Mayo has never, like, uh, has even been like a high level no. coach before. Nope. No, he kind of got the Jeff Saturday like. Treatment. Well, it's he like, he was a coach on the Patriots last year. Okay, I don't know what he did, but he, they were kind of like, maybe. yeah, they were kind of like grooming him to do this. But like so. He, <laughs> rookie wow. head coach, predator. <laughs> he, he was the inside linebackers coach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And now it, he's the head coach. Rookie yep. head coach, rookie quarterback potentially. If not, it's Jacoby Brissett throwing to KJ Osborne, Kendrick Bourne, your... and Jalen Polk too. Oof. <laughs> yeah, that offensive <laughs> line was also one of the reasons why Mac Jones looked terrible last year too. So I, it's going to be bad. Now I, I say this every year. I think it was, was it two years ago. I said the Seahawks would be the worst team in the NFL with Geno Smith starting. And they had like what an eight or nine win team. So it, you never know, but I don't know, man, I don't see it with this team at all. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be bad. I, I don't really have much to add here. I think their best bet is to sit Drake may if I'm being honest maybe get him some reps at the end of the year but yeah uh this reeks of of bears mitch trubisky situation honestly like it's so bad oh yeah this offense yeah. the defense will be good uh this will offense, it though they just traded so. the best player though that didn't play at all last season and well he did yeah, play but like no, five games he played like five games and I don't know if they the were still pretty solid good, on though. defense last year I mean, I think I think the defense will be fine. They won't be the reason that they're bad. The offense will be the reason that they're bad. Uh, I I just damn like man, they won how many games last year? Four, I think. With with Bill Belichick coaching, I don't know, man. I just I don't, yeah, it's I, gonna be it, it's gonna be bad for the Patriots. They're projected to be the worst team in the league. Their their win total is uh, let me scroll down here four and a half. So yeah, that's bad. Oh, it seems okay. I had six and a half. I'm really trying to think yeah, of it. Four so and a half Pan- seems so right. So Panthers are definitely going to be up there and potentially one of the worst teams. Although they could surprise some people, I guess. Uh, that that could be a surprise team. But Currently, um, currently Patriots... Tankathon has Carolina first and New England second. Okay, who's who's third out of here? Broncos. Broncos. Yeah. Okay, yep. Broncos make sense. Yeah, and we'll get to them eventually. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, New England, I, oh, I just... It's going to be a tough season for New England Patriots fans. For Patriots fans that have only, like, imagine if you were <laughs> born in, like, the 90s. Like, the early, like, if you're Brett's age, if you're born in, like, the early 90s and you and just started, season like. season was, like, the Brady rookie season. Yeah, like, you were probably, like, what, you know, eight or nine years old when Brady's winning his first Super Bowl. And then, that's yeah, like probably that's eight like or nine. That, that's, like, all you know for the next 20 years. It's going to be a tough year for those people. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get over it, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, they have Celtics. The, they, they have the, have the Celtics Sox. championship to, to dry their tears right now. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, all right, you want to move on to yeah. the Jets? The New York Jets. Um, all right. I like this team a lot. It really all it, – it's just like last year, man. It's like how, how healthy is Aaron Rodgers going to be and how good is he going to be? Because honestly – 
we for kind of forget his last season with the Packers. He was he was yeah. fine. He wasn't you know the Aaron Rodgers that we all know. So I don't know, man. I I do like this team a lot though. They are. I mean, I the defense is going to be good. We know that, right? This defense has been good for the last three seasons under Robert Salah. It's just the offense, man. Like it's just it is what it is. We will never know what last season would have looked like because Aaron Rodgers got hurt five plays in. <laughs> so, um, I mean, shit, Nick, you and I had a fantasy team that team that we co- we co run. We drafted Garrett Wilson like with our first, first pick. We were yeah. we were so hyped for Garrett Wilson to take off in fantasy with Aaron Rodgers. So he, he was going to be the next Devonte Adams. He still might be. But they got Mike Williams, which is another big pickup. So now you have a, a deep ball threat. Um. I, I like their offense, man. I mean, uh, I think Brees Hall is what what RB two league behind McCaffrey right now for for fantasy purposes. I think I'm seeing him go so, two him, or three. Him and Bijan, yeah. <clears throat> but he's a top five running back in the league right now. So, oh, for sure, for sure. So um, they made some upgrades on the offensive line. They signed Tyron Smith. Um, so I mean. It's just is is Aaron Rodgers gonna be healthy? Uh, they also they also drafted Olu Fashanu on the O line too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so they bolstered that O line to help protect uh, yeah uh, ayahuasca boy. So um, they didn't resign Randall Cobb. Sad. Oh, man. But I think Alan Lazard is still there, and I'm like everyone kind of forgets Alan Lazard existed. Cause... He is the fourth receiver in in the on the New York Jets roster. Right yeah. Now. Um, yeah, I, I mean, very similar to last year in terms of this team has all of the ingredients to be good. It is obviously, like most teams, dependent on the health of their star quarterback. Um, but I mean, if he's healthy, this team should be good. <coughs> right now, they're projected for nine and a half wins, which feels right to me in this mm-hmm. division, kind of in the position that they're in. Um, I would almost go as far to say that this is their division to lose at this point, just kind of the state of the other teams in their division right now. Uh, They also, let's check their strength of schedule. They have the fourth easiest schedule in the league. So I don't know. I I think this team has potential definitely. I I mean, this is the thing. I hate Aaron Rodgers, but difference in the conversation between the jets and the dolphins is like you know that the guy leading the jets can do this in january and february you don't know that any other quarterback in this division really can do that yeah he he can win games but can't and you can't really they they don't big one since they don't have to play against the 49ers in uh in the afc it's true it's really true (laughs) Um, yeah i i really think that um it's just it, it's one of the you know as much as I don't like Aaron Rodgers, it is one of the shittier moments of last year for sure. Where it's like we just never got to see what that team would have been like with him, um, because it would be so much easier for us to paint the Jets picture of this season if he had been healthy off last year. We know what to expect. So again, we just don't know what to expect. He hasn't played at an MVP level in three seasons. Yeah. So um, and and kind of the conversation I think that. I'm kind of going back and forth on it in my head with the Jets is there's really two sides of the coin. One, the the pessimistic side, which is Aaron Rodgers, even healthy, is a guy that two months ago would have taken the vice presidency nomination from RFK if he gave it to him. And now he's going to be quarterback like so is this a guy whose head is really invested in football right now but then on the optimistic side of the coin uh there's a potentially game-changing wide receiver on the market right now that the jets could be a good fit for in cd lamb who is not getting paid by the (laughs) the cowboys right now yeah they have the uh being linked to a lot of teams i mean why not i I mean, capital yes. doesn't doesn't really exist in the NFL anymore, as far as I'm concerned, be, because of the New Orleans Saints. They're they're just able to, <laughs> like, you can do anything in the NFL to make you know, actually, a roster situation a, a, work. A team that would actually make a lot of sense for CD Lamb to go to if they're willing to make a deal for him is the Chargers. 
But I mean, this team though, this New York Jets roster would be disgusting with CD Lamb oh, and yeah. Garrett Wilson. I mean, yeah. that would be <laughs> ridiculous. They they would be they would become a Super Bowl favorite for sure. Like not the Super Bowl favorite, but they'd be top three in odds right away if CD Lamb came. We can't mention the Jets preview without at least mentioning one of their you know dysfunctional moves that they do as a they are a dysfunctional franchise um they traded for hassan reddick and did not give him an extension and he that's literally what he wanted he just wanted an extension like he was like the opposite of matthew judon judon was like hey i'll I'll just play and i'll play for my next contract reddick is like no i i I want my next contract before i show up to camp like i'm not going to show up until i have a contract the jets were like here's a second round pick we'll take you and not give you an extension and so he's still not showing to camp he's Did still not a second Did, i don't know maybe, maybe it was a second maybe it was a third i don't know i can't remember but he still hasn't shown up to camp he has nope. not shown up and the jets i don't expect have him to no plans on giving him an extension so he also seems like a guy based on how the story has been going that he's just not gonna show up if they don't give him an extension, like he's never going to play it down for the Jets. And they gave up a draft pick for that guy, and he may never play a snap for him. It's possible. See if uh, the Cowboys are interested in another edge rusher um, <laughs> for, for CD Lamb. Uh, um, who knows? Who knows, man? It's just very but, Jets to trade for a guy and then realize, wait, he he's not going to show up unless we have an extension. So why did we trade for him? Yeah, 20, um, 2026, Brett just put it in the chat, 2026 conditional third uh, that can become a second if yeah. specific conditions are met, which it sounds like yeah. they might be met uh, <laughs> based on him not playing. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, let's go rank this real quick before we jump into, I guess, the rest of our shot takes um, to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to go Jets first. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dolphins second, Bills third, Patriots fourth. I'm going to go pretty much the same, except I will have the Dolphins winning the division okay. in the regular season. So Dolphins will win. Uh, Jets second, Bills third, Patriots fourth. Um, the Patriots being so bad, it's that's just kind of what the bottom of the division is going to yeah. look like for everybody. Yeah, I th- I think that's f- Tankathon's got it right. I think the Panthers, Broncos, Patriots, in some order or another, will be the top three worst teams, and so Patriots are no brainer to to not you know be in contention at all for this division. So, Brett, what do you got? I got Dolphins, Jets, Bills, Patriots, same as you, okay. Nick. same right. as me. All so right, I'm on the Jets hype train. Jets Love hype it. train again. Two seasons in a row. What could go wrong? Hey, have we followed a team that we're going to curse this year yet? We Who would, oh, that's a great. Um, so or do we, we st- have we not gotten through all of the? We, we, we haven't gotten through, gotten through, all, through all of them yet. So hold on. But I don't know if there is a team that we're all bullish on. So I can't remember who we cursed. Was it the Jaguars last year? Last year yes. we cursed the Jags. Yep. So th- when yep. we first started the podcast, it was the Colts. Mm-hmm. Colts cursed the Colts. Uh, second, I want to say we cursed. Was it the Texans? No. Uh, no. Was it the Bengals? No. Bengals. Mm, I don't think we cursed the Bengals. Broncos. Broncos. Oh, that was yes, bro- the yep, Broncos. 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 It was Russ. It was, yeah, was yeah, Russ. Yeah. Colts, the Broncos, Broncos Russ. Jaguars. Russ. Yeah. So, so all right. we don't have a cursed team yet. <laughs> so team we're not that, all super bullish on the Jets. So team that has a lot of hype that all three of us are on board with. We haven't that, gotten there yet. I'm we really inevitably th- will. I'm trying to think. I mean, though, like, to be who? fair, the Bears do have a lot of hype, but we, but we know they're not going to win. But I, the whole I thing. had the Bears in last in the North. Yeah, so. yeah. But I'm saying, like, me, media hype. There's a lot of hype around them, but we, we know yes. they're not going to win the whole thing. Were we all right. on the same page for AFC North? I feel like we were. Who do we have? Is it the Bengals? No, Bang. I had Bengals. I had Bengals. Oh, I had you Browns, had Browns. Connor, you had the Browns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, trying to think who should we curse. Green Bay. I mean, I mean we were no, we, we, we were all pretty did. bullish we on Green Bay. We all put Green Bay in, in first. Let's to win. I have a division. I have a responsibly large. Future. I do think Green Bay will be very good this year. I have a responsibly large future on them. Yes, that means that they Curse should Curse be cursed so that they don't win. Uh, we probably have to get through the rest of them first to determine the actual curse team. Mm-hmm. But the curse team usually comes naturally. It's a team yeah, that we're all like, like naturally hyped about. 
and then they end up sucking. I feel like that team when we get to them could be the Rams. The Rams could be that <laughs> yeah, team where it's like be, they're it's, gonna be great be this year and then they just suck. Like that's that's a team that's got bleacher bum curse potential. Or the Texans. Texans could be a good option. That's Ooh, a that's a really juicy one where it's a like one. a lot of hype. Yeah. Texans they're, might get and then CJ the Stroud land. just sucks. Like he just comes out and throws like or gets injured. forty interceptions. Like that would be just on brand for us to curse the Texans. I think the one that I'm still most shocked about from our curses is the Broncos. Like the, how, that, how that, bad they were. One, they were yeah. so, I had them in the Super And Russ Bowl is still bad that, apparently. <laughs> He's still bad. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't we didn't really when we got AFC North preview a couple weeks ago, we did not really discuss the Russ and Justin um we did a little bit. A little bit, but now now that we actually have like preseason footage of them, it's uh not looking too good. Both look bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's finish up with shot takes here. I did mine already with the Patriots being the worst in the league. All right, I'm gonna Nick, Mr. Gonna Ferret go. King. Curious to see where Ferret he goes King. this week. What do you got? Um, so yeah, I know last week we kind of, or two weeks ago, we kind of gave Connor shit for not giving a sports take, and now I'm not gonna give a sports take. Um, hear me out. I hate that rappers are making country music now. It's Ooh. terrible. Post Malone just dropped a, a country album. Uh, what, is, what was it last last Friday? Yeah, it's gotten uh, out of control, dude. Is like, he a rapper though anymore? Because he has You can't really say okay, he's a rapper but, anymore. But not even both. Lil Durk is on uh, country okay, songs well, with Morgan different. Wallen. Yeah, Moneybag Yo is on country songs. <laughs> Who? Uh, Moneybag Yo. I've no the, idea. Oh, the most Nick, drill no, rap get cultured. Yeah, the most the most <laughs> drill rap cultured. Memphis uh, young Dolph tree rapper that you could yeah. think of My is making country songs. Young Gravy is about to drop a country young album gravy. as well. Yeah, it, it's can we stop, dude? It's so bad. Like the rap country genre is so bad. Like we we had tossed around the idea in the chat about doing a. Uh, a songs that are overhyped and basically every song that i thought of right away was a country rap uh a country rap song the the pour me a drink right now with morgan wallen and uh i think it's blake shelton i can't stand that song dude and i hear it everywhere i go i saw i'm not joking on the way to the grocery store today i saw a grandmother banging to that song like bumping that song going crazy at a stoplight to pour me a drink by post malone and i'm like this is too much dude we it's so bad it's such yeah. it's such a post, bad genre of music i think post was getting a lot of heat for basically i think um a lot of people online were just accusing him of using rap to get his like foot in the door with music the music industry his first two albums were very you know hip-hop rap esque and then he just went straight to like pop like radio pop music and like country music on his now his like, country he was going pop which albums. was fine i thought his pop music was fine his yeah country music so wait sucks. nick <clears throat> are you a country music fan in general i like or? some i like some country i like good country music i do not like generally How, what, is what would you define radio. what would you define as good country um it's so i guess yeah, that is a good question. I like uh, like Tyler Childers, um, Zach Bryan. Like, I like good songwriting. I know okay. most people won't consider Zach Bryan a country artist. He probably isn't. He's more like Americana. But if you're generalizing mm -hmm. into a group of music, it's I like good songwriters more so. Mm -hmm. Like Luke Combs get a lot of love. Luke Combs is okay. Like his first album was great, I thought, and now he's more radio country like like a lot of mm -hmm. the guys are a lot of those guys um, are on radio country that's like, you, know, you know who's actually a good country artist that like people probably wouldn't listen to because of how he looks is jelly roll jelly roll is a great yeah. country artist yeah um but yeah i just i generally dislike what's going on with the country scene right now too i mean music in general is just it's have sad. You, it's, have it's you guys heard sad. of the new genre that this one artist is kind of uh, coined? Uh, the artist is from Ohio. They're called Bill Murray. B-I-L-M-U-R-I. Right. <laughs> like, what, what's the genre? They're calling it Y'alternative. 
Oh boy. <laughs> oh, but is it's it like basically pop, con- pop it, punk it, country? It's like, yeah, it's like oh, pop punky, no. but country and rocky. It's it's actually like his new EP is actually pretty good. I I enjoy it. If you but it's like got that twangy country with like some chuggy guitars and like pop punky kind of. I just chorus like. That's I think that's okay, but what I don't like is the evolution of of Post Malone particularly going from like talking about his struggles with addiction mm-hmm. to I'm at a Ford F one fifty party with my boys drinking beer. Like it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. it's cringy. It's not I mean, what these rappers country, country post, is like the most popular thing right now. I, I don't post, understand I how totally, post, is, post is sold out in my opinion. I, I mean I get the desire to be at the top of the charts, but this it's just so bad like i'm i'm fully expecting to by the way mgk to like lean into that the alternative direction because he's gone from rapper to pop punk artist to i'm sure he's just gonna see oh everybody's going to country now i'm now i'm the alternative but um i mean post malone not the, not the first white guy to use hip-hop to get his foot in the door uh kid rock when he started his career was very much i mean yeah. Yeah. tried to be a rapper and then he went to country that I, that would be a good example to like look at Post Malone's career if there weren't like three other rappers doing the same thing that he's doing right now. I, I don't know if Post Malone's even a rapper. Like like what's he ever That is what he's known for though. That is what he is known for. Yeah. His I'll first show you two albums alternative if we have yeah. time. Yeah. But interesting um, take. I mean I kinda like I I like the take. No, he's Nick's hundred percent right. There's yeah, it's the music say. industry in general is getting out of control. Um it's the main the mainstream scene is just like I, I don't even know anymore I don't know well I mean I, I I was gonna have a take but I mean there's no really real point I this is like a small take genres don't matter anymore because people are just mashing everything together yeah I think that's probably true but I what I get angry about is when they like try to lean into something that is not their forte mm-hmm like if Metallica was like we're gonna release a rap record like that would just be awful but yeah but we, like, yeah and, and we all know it because they're old and their music wasn't you know it hasn't been yeah. relevant for a decade but um still selling out but hey no I, i'm just saying like their stuff is not really played on the rate like in terms of no, like popular yeah. artists right now we let these popular artists get away with it mm-hmm. because they're popular but if it, like if Drake released a country album, dude, people would be shitting on it. Beyonce did a cu- uh, country. Yes, album. that's a good, another yeah. good example. Beyonce did country. Is... I didn't even think of that, but yes, that's yeah. another horrible addition to the country genre. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. You're right though. It's 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 bad. It's bad. It's sad day, bad day. So um, bad. All right, Brett, Brett you got a take? Nope, no take. Brett, Brett take. no take. Oh, take. am I doing a take? Or Connor yeah, already did his. I already Connor did mine. His. Sorry, the, the cats were making Connor, noise. Connor had the scorching hot take. That yeah, that the scorching hot take that New England will be picking the first. The worst yeah. team in the league. All right, here you I go. I mean, Broncos <laughs> and write, Panthers. Write that down, folks. Write that down. <laughs> write that down. Broncos okay. and Panthers, I'm gonna I don't up know. To you guys. I, too, have a music take. and Or, or I can do a movie take. Ooh, the is, the, is the movie about something that's come out recently? It's like kind of just a... No, it's not something about recently. Um, it's just a thought that I had based on a specific genre of film. Mm. Mm. But I, mean, I can do the counter, music one. Counter pick. pick uh, one. Should I do music or should I music. go with well, the stick, stick to music. Stick to the music one? All right. Stick to sports. Music. Hear me out. <laughs> Connor's going to laugh at this. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are oh, one of Jesus. the greatest bands <laughs> of all time. Oh, Who? God. Who? Who are these people? Do we have so, that trap? <laughs> King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are a band out of Australia. <laughs> they started in 2012. They have 26 albums. Wait, Let why? me repeat that. 26 <laughs> albums. Why do they have so many albums? Because they just keep pumping. They have 26 studio albums, 16 live albums, and they just keep pumping out new stuff. But what's crazy is this band is kind of, I've kind of, I can't really wrap my head around the band because every album is different. They've started with like garage, psychedelic, 60s, then they'll go into like electronic in the next album, 
then they'll go into like 80s motorhead metal then they'll go into like their most recent album is like 70s almond brothers southern rock it's all over the place you know but the how fact do you find that these bands? that's what i'm i <laughs> right, that's my first question i have a lot of questions okay <laughs> I, I'll, I uh i give my time to connor to ask questions <laughs> okay yeah no next question how do you find these bands first of all i, I actually know what you're talking about i know what you're talking about i hope you know that you're in the same demographic group as dan bernstein from the score because he was talking about this on was he? on was sports he? radio like a few months ago yeah like he brought it up or it was one of his producers brought it up probably studs because um, studs is the one who listens to a lot of weird uh, stuff that i listen to yeah and you and studs are like the same age and you're in, like the that subgroup of people that are in their 30s that find weird stuff to listen to and i don't i don't know how you do it dude well like, so i don't reason, i don't know so how you, t- how do I you found, find these people so i was hanging out with some old friends uh, at the old, old apartment complex i used to live at maybe in like 2014 15 16 and they had just gotten back from seeing king gizzard and the lizard wizard and they were like, you got to check this band out. This band is insane. They have two drummers. They play psychedelic rock, but then garage rock, but then metal, but then electronic, and then jazz, fusion. It's all over the place. And so I started listening to them. Some of their albums I really enjoy. Like, uh, I have one of them, actually, back there, this one. Now that I think about um, it, Brett, you and Adam Stadzinski from The Score are the same person. <laughs> when no. I hear, when I, no, no, no. When I hear him talk... It kind of reminds me of, <laughs> of you. All right. I, well, he, I, he talks more football than I do. Yeah, he's a former football player himself, but like his uh, his music taste, I feel like is right up your alley. Probably. Like he probably like I, I I just was I don't know. I, so where I thought you were gonna go with this, Brett, was oh I've seen I've seen them at a bar or like a no festival. I have yet to see them. They're on my um, list because that's where like all of like the weird bands that I listen to. Mm-hmm. It's like oh I've seen them perform at like a small show i have not like seen that. them right. but i've uh i want to see them but the problem is is obviously getting tickets um because they sell the, their shows apparently well, it sounds sell like they're international band too yeah they're international but yeah. i just find it insane that every time like i bit like it took me so long to get into them because like i said every album is different they have different eras that's what i've i have heard about these guys yeah like like the album that i have on vinyl is probably one of my like probably my favorite album of theirs but it's also more akin to the genres that i always listen to their new album is really good if you like that 70s like uh classic southern rock style almond brother band uh leonard skinner style um so your take of these guys is again is what they're the best, best band, band ever no, no 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 not best band they they are one of the greatest bands of all time oh okay because of the fact that they are, they've only been around since what 2012, 2011, and they have already put out 20 album, 26. So albums? basically, putting out two albums a year. Yeah. It's yeah, like they put out. Let's see. In the 2000s, they put out. <laughs> so let's see. They put out one, two, three, four, five albums in 2023, uh, 2022. Five. They put five albums Jesus in 2022. Christ. And it's then like, they've put then they like, put out one uh, one two in 2023, one album so far this year. Uh, they put out one two three four five albums in 2017. Um, and like like I said, they're not all the same. They're Again, all different. I say this a lot on this podcast. Do you? I'm about to say it again. This band reminds me of how many people exist in the world oh, because yeah. like if they're selling out like i don't know what size venues they're selling out but again they have a cult following clearly mm-hmm. and it's just a friendly reminder of how large the world is and how many people exist on this planet to have a cult following for a band like that you know that's just my i, I don't know i i'm just <laughs> sorry i just dude. had to look something up because when you were rattling off how many albums they had, yeah, there was only one person in my mind that had a chance at competing with that number of albums, and that is Keith Cozart, aka Chief, Chief Keith. Keith. <laughs> um, so I guess a parting a parting thought for this episode would be: Who do you guys think has more albums since 2012? Chief Cause, Keith, because Chief Keith's first album is 2012. His album was 2012. Who do you think has more albums, according to Genius.com? Chief Keef or King Gizzard? 
King Giz- King, King Gizzard King, and the Lizard King Wizard. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I mean, we said twenty six. When did Chief Keef start? Uh, twenty twelve. Yep, twenty twelve. So, I mean, if they had twenty six, I'm gonna go. He had twenty eight. They counting mixtapes too. I don't know. I don't know what they're counting. <laughs> what is uh, it, Brett? What's your thought? Um, when did the other guy start? 2012. 2012. Same time. Oh, they yeah. they started at the same time. Yeah, yeah. That's why I thought of him. Ooh, that's a good question. I'm gonna say Gizzard. All right, Connor, get that outro started. Chief Keef has 55 <laughs> albums credited oh since 2012. Uh, 55. <laughs> That's insane. 55? 55 <laughs> albums credited you know, since 2012. One thing I'll say about him before he closes this out is he, he clearly knew what he was doing with the first album. He was like one of the most mainstream artists in 2012. Had like six hits on his first album and then proceeded to not give a fuck about anything. <laughs> anything, like he, dude. He, he, I mean, he would put out like, I guess, yeah, 54 albums after that. That's um, insane. And he only had like maybe one other hit after his first album, which is was like a cult following type hit that was played at house parties, Finito. But like that's about it. Like I couldn't name another Chief Keef song outside of the first album and Finito. I can't name another Chief Keef song. Oh, so dude. I mean, uh, there is I mean, there is another that's artist Con- crazy. that there's another artist though that Connor knows that I used to listen to oh, that Bucket also has an, abs- that has an yeah. absurd number of albums. Buckethead's got to have like 60 albums. So, well, I mean, if you count his Pike albums, which are like 30 minutes and up. Yeah, I think all of his Pike albums are like 30 minutes, around 30 minutes. Uh, he has <laughs> 655. Okay, yeah, no, it's that's plus Jesus Plus Christ. another 31. That's so stupid. <laughs> so he has 686 Albums, and again, total. and again, that guy has a cult following, and had he a, does have a cult following. He had I also a have song on live. Guitar Hero. He had a song Guitar Hero. It just, yeah, it, it reminds me how many people, how exist. large the world is. This is uh, the end of the episode. Thanks for listening. Uh, we will be back hopefully next week with a little bit longer of an episode to preview um, two more divisions. Hopefully, we have I think two and a half weeks before. Or no, we actually have. It's two weeks from tomorrow. The NFL season kicks off, I believe. So uh, we will try to get as much in as possible. Uh, we do have Labor Day weekend coming up after next week. So, um, again, we'll, we'll try to get in as much as we can next week. And then the week after, we'll be leading right up to opening kickoff. Which, who is the opening kickoff game, by the way? Thursday night? Who kicks off the season? Isn't it Ravens-Chiefs? Is it? Am I wrong? Um, it is Ravens-Chiefs. Ravens-Chiefs Thursday Packers, Eagles, and Brazil on Friday. Weird. Weird schedule. So, NFL already dominating, trying to, you know, take over people's calendars the first week. We have a Thursday Thursday game, Friday game, and then a full slate of Sunday games. Um, so, and we have actual college football starting this weekend, too. We have the This week weekend zero. or next weekend? This weekend. This is week, week zero. zero. Yeah. But you have yeah. one, like, top 25 matchup this week. Florida State, Georgia Tech. Saturday at noon Eastern, so 11 a.m. Central. Um, that's pretty much the only notable game in yeah. Week Zero. Otherwise, it's a bunch of like Mac teams playing. Yeah. So again, thank you for listening. We'll be back next week, hopefully. Go Bears. <laughs>